G'day mate, welcome back to Satisfactory with me, JD. Since last episode, I've done a few things, little things, you know, like, um, we're trying to get... Alright, go away, train. Uh, we're trying to get... Alcad aluminium plates. These ones down here. So, we're already shipping in the aluminium ingots for the old base, we will replace that in time. Uh, but we're also trying to get some copper ingots down here, because I don't actually have copper ingots down here. I don't have any raw materials down here. So... Our base is over here, and I went and found the closest copper, which literally happened to be uh, a stone throw away. Uh, may die. And I have my loot box back. Um, do you know Fix It? Fix It Incorporated highly encourages all staff members to wear a jetpack when working at any sort of heights. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, as I was saying, um, yeah, it turns out I had copper literally. Um, just over here. Um, the good news is I found another crash site on the way past, so, you know, it wasn't a complete loss, but, um, if I just get back up to where we were, there's a crash site just over there. Um, anyway, so, built a quick train station, um, out in the middle of nowhere, hooked up, Two Mark II miners with a couple of conveyor belts straight to the loading station um, so we could get as much copper ore as we needed as fast as possible. We are using uh, logistics Mark IV conveyor belts because we obviously we don't have the Alcat or Alcard aluminium plates ready yet to make the Mark V belts. Um, we got a nice short train that pops back and forth, and I do have to thank uh, Total Eclipse, who basically put out a really, really good tutorial on how to do a perfect 90 degree bend in a train track. I do recommend you put down, and I think he might have covered this in his tutorial, do recommend you put down both the straights first and then hook up the, the, the 90 degree bend, because I found when I when I did it without hooking up the other end, of the, the, the exiting track had a little bit of a curve in it. Um, but as you can see, our train track is dead straight. Um, it's definitely how we want it. Dead straight train track. Anyway, that brings us to our unloading stations. Our unloading stations are unique. Um, is probably the best way of putting it. Um, they're, they're, they're really designed so this train, which is currently only doing copper, can be extended to go to further stations to pick up more resources. Um, and it has one, two, three, four, five unload stations. And that is because we have uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then we can build a second train station with one, two, three, four resources. Um, I don't really want uranium shipped to this base. Um, I have a feeling that'll come back to haunt us. But it means we can very, very easily build our first station with five. Uh, our five, five unloads. Our second station with five unloads, leaving one free for not uranium. We'll ship that out separately. And as we get further expansion into the game, we can uh, have a bit of a lag spike. Um, as we get further expansion in the game, we'll have room for extra stations. Um, so we're going to pop another station beside this, just out here in the void. And that'll be our second unload station. Now, our copper comes in on our second cargo wagon because it's the second resource you start spending and that's pretty much the theory I'm going to go with and then it's come up here and it's put straight into um smelted straight into copper plates because copper so far doesn't have any other use um if it does we do have a second unload port from our train station which we can take off and 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 convert into something else um but at the moment it only goes into plates now I do want to show off my smelting setup and probably the best place to look at that this is on top um, what we're actually gonna do well it's a few things so first off we're bringing in because I have mark four belts no I, I have mark four belts but we are planning for mark five belts so I am bringing up I am aiming to bring in 780 resources if I'm bringing in 780 resources that is more enough to run each one of these splitters in each one of these smelters doing 30 per minute. So that's 30 and 30 is 60, uh, multiplied by 12 long, um, gives us 780 per minute. And our outputs, I'm joining our three outputs together, I'm putting it into a merger, into a Mark III belt, because we have 
uh, 30, 30, 30, which is only 90. Um, I could use a Mark II belt, but I didn't have any, um, I didn't have any um, reinforced iron plate on me, so I just went straight to a Mark III belt, brought it up and above, and ran it straight back into the merger. Because we can now stack these on top of one another, um, as you can see, I, it's it's really streamlined our whole uh, smelting process. And then I'm going to bring it out. Oops. I'm going to land between the smelters. As you can see, it's a very, very compact build. Um, but I'm going to bring this out here and run it up there. And I do actually have to build the other side. So I'm going to do that quickly. I'm going to put in a quick time lapse so you guys can watch along. Um, and see you guys at the other side when this is all done. And that is everything hooked up. Now, I did make a design choice that I could have brought each one of these up on their own uh, conveyor lift and plugged them straight into a merger, which is what I did in the first place. And that actually changed my mind. I decided, look, going for my factory experience and everything else, this is a slightly wider build, but there is a good chance that each time belts merge into a, into a conveyor merger, there is gonna be some sort of CPU cost. So as we're already really, really pushing the limits of the game with just what we have already and we're going bigger again, I thought, look, if I merge them down here and then bring them up, in theory, that should be a, a, a less of a strain on the actual um, processor because even with my 9900, um, we have problems sometimes. But the other beauty of this system is it's connected via one power pole. So when we turn that on, Everything will fire in action. We can even get clouded by smoke and run this up to our conveyor lift, which will take us up to the next level. So we're up on our bus level above our train station. And as you can see, I'm feeding them straight into our very first, uh, our very first, um, well, bus part. So um, I've only hooked up not quite all the belts from, from our original train station. Um, but yeah, I, I figure if we're going to put iron ore in here, we'll put copper ore in here, um, and then we'll see how we go as we go up. We'll probably put coal in and, and literally follow one from one from our trains into this particular stack, and then obviously the stack beside it. Um, I have filled out all the stacks. This is the maximum room we have for our bus. I can already see we don't have enough room on this part of the map, so... Um, some design choices are going to have to be made. Um, I actually have a feeling I'm going to have to run extra belts down the middle. Oh, extra storage containers down the middle to get in the bus space that we need. I have no idea if that's going to work long term. Um, but yeah, it turns out there's a lot of different materials that you need to make. And Satisfactory doesn't really have a lot of clear map space for large buses. Now, I do, I can see straight away that yes, there is smoke flying through the ground. Design choices. Um... I figure at the end of the day, because of the cost that we found with our current base setup, with all the belts moving, it's actually causing a performance drain on the PC. The best thing we can do is actually enclose this whole area. So from the train station all the way to the end, and then, well, the train station is temporary as we dismantle part of the main base, this whole train station will get ripped down. But also in case this whole bus structure in walls and all that sort of stuff, so we can't see it, so hopefully it minimizes the, the drain on the PC. Anyway, um, now we've got some aluminium plates. Um, we have, oh no, we've got aluminium plates. Now we've got some plates, we've now got some copper ingots. Um, I'm gonna put in a cut here. And the next thing we'll actually set up will be um, some uh, assemblers to make uh, Alcad aluminium sheets, which will let us get Mark V belts. So I will see you back um, after another small cut.
So we're back with our aluminium ingots flying along, filling up this container fairly quickly. Uh, and we've got our copper, which is obviously in the second one up because iron's on the bottom one. As you can see, it's also flying in, filling up this container. And I've already got our holes punched in the ground, so we know where we're going down to the next level. And if you remember the original concept, the original concept, um, it, as explained earlier in this episode, was to come down sort of right beside these um, belts and then step out one notch before going down to the next level. But as I said, because I could already worked out that we do not have nearly enough storage containers for nearly enough uh, lanes on our bus, we need to modify our plants. So I'm actually going to remove that foundation and put that one back in its place so I don't fall through it just at this moment. Um, and we're going to come down straight off there into our uh, assembler. And then we're going to work out our lanes from there. So, organization. No, we want logistics. Uh, conveyor splitter. And I don't want to touch our first, um, our first foundation. Because technically our storage containers sit on that foundation. Um, so, I want to come out at least one. And then... Aim a splitter nice and high so it connects with the belt. And then we need to do our, the same with our copper, which will be right, say, there. Uh, copper needs to come down on this side. And we need to actually jump down to this level. Now, there's going to be a few compromises with this base. Because I want to build as large as possible, we need to compromise on a few things. Um, in the pre in Previously, um, clipping was just not allowed, couldn't do it. But because I want to limit how deep we're going to go into this canyon, I need to let a few things pass. First one we let pass was the smoke from the smelters. Second one we're actually going to let pass is I have made this as absolutely short as possible. So as you can see, our assembly machine for, uh, fits perfectly fine as long as we ignore the giant red light sticking out the top. Um, it just has to be done. There's no other way about it. It, it just has to be done. So um, it's, again, just going to be one of those compromises. Uh, actually, I haven't checked. Can I hook up power to this? Oh, it'd be really embarrassing if I couldn't power it. No, power works fine. Um, so yeah, it's just going to have to be one of those little compromises we have to make. Uh, but I need to remove those two foundations, get rid of the power pole as well. And try and hook up our conveyor lift from the far side of... Okay, I have to build it out slightly further so I can see it. Uh, if you're new to this channel, well, new, new to this 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 particular base, um, there's a few few important things you need to remember. One, I'm Australian, so everything's out trying to, to to kill me. So I'm actually deeply deeply arachnophobic. So spiders are awesome. Secondly, I'm actually completely afraid of heights. Um, really can't stand them. So all this building at this sort of level and and all that sort of fun stuff are uh, really petrifying. And the amount of times I almost step over the edge is amazing. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit like that. So you've been warned. So I'm going to cut back in after I come up with a design. Um, well, actually, no. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put down an assembler and look at the actual recipe. Uh... So 15 per minute, 10 per minute. Now the copper ingots are not a problem. We've got like potentially 780 after we upgrade all the belts. Um, but the aluminium ingots are probably a problem. Um, we're probably not making that many of them back at home base. Um, don't get me wrong, we can fix that. Um, we can ship bauxite into this base directly. Uh, we have silica? No, we don't have silica coming in directly. So we could also ship in silica directly and make a, a bunch of bauxite. Or we could even, uh, a bunch of aluminium ingots. Or we can even swap over to an alternate recipe. Uh, no, we don't have an alternate recipe for that. We have an alternate recipe for that one. Um, 
So yeah, we can always make them more on site, but it makes 7.5. So we've probably only got about 15 per minute. Um, insane. But I'm going to I'm gonna build for a bit of expansion. So I'm going to make things a little bit larger than maybe the, 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 the system could keep up with. And then we're going to go forth from there. So I'm going to cut this again and come back to you guys with some sort of design to get all this manufacturing happening. And we're back. So this is the design I've come up with. It looks a little bit silly, but you know, just bear with me. Um, now that we can actually stack our splitters and our mergers one on top of one another, it's actually made life a lot easier. So I've got the aluminium coming in the bottom and the copper coming in on top. And then literally all I'm doing is making sure I've got enough room that I can put in a splitter lined up with one of these two inputs doesn't really matter which one uh put two hang on go for it there we go uh put two splitters on top and you need to make sure that you rotate the the top one 180 degrees hang on we'll do this again so when i put down the first splitter the second one on top has a habit of spinning 180 degrees. So really, really important you make sure you have you orientate that one the right way. Run your top belt straight through. And then literally just plug in your two inputs. Um, doesn't matter which one goes where. It, it's, it's, it's all the same. One goes to one, one goes to the other. You know, um, as you can see, I've... I've bleh, Definitely kept the same pattern. You know, we've got copper going in one side sometimes, the other side the other time. Um, we're going to set all our recipes. And then we need a power hooker. Now, I haven't made any real decisions about power yet. I am lazy. I do use the Mark II power poles, or the Mark I power poles, purely because they're just so much quicker to put down. Um, if, when... Um, Jace and the rest of the team at Coffee Stain Studios um, actually upgrade the power poles so I can fast replace them. I guarantee you, I will go through and I will replace everything with at least a Mark II. If I've automated um, high-speed connectors at that point, I will upgrade everything to a, a Mark III. And then I'll probably go through and start removing um, power poles that just aren't required and, and make sure each Mark III power pole is actually has 10 power connections on it. Because... There's a lot of unneeded power poles going down. Um, but for the moment, we're just going to hook this to our last manufacturing. Where is it? Right here. It's become very, very dark very, very quickly. And it turns out I can't afford a power cable. So again, I'm going to put in a cut. I'll be right back with some more cable. And we're back. So I went and found some cable from the bus, literally right above my head. Also waited till daybreak. So it was a little bit easier for you guys to see. And we're going to actually hook up that one straight to there. And quick as that, we've actually started producing um, the Alcad, Alcad aluminum sheets. Now, for the other end of this contraption, the output... You might be saying, what the JD? And look, I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, obviously, it would be a much cleaner if we had all these mergers in a straight line. We just merge them all in a straight line. But, as I said, I'm trying to minimize the impact of the game on my PC. Um, because I want to build as large as possible. Which means some compromises have to be made. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take two lines and merge them together. And then take three lines and merge them into a single merger. Um, I'm hoping I can repeat that over and over and over. Um, and hopefully minimize our usage or our CPU usage that way. Um, at the same time, you might notice that my jetpack keeps running out of fuel. I keep going and topping it up. And then a short while later, I've got no fuel left. I actually took a chance between, um, well, whilst going in that cable, to find out there's oil right there. So very very shortly there is going to be a job of get that oil put in a refinery i don't care if it's floating in midair and start making some some um rocket fuel because yeah we we keep burning through fuel in our jetpack anyway back to uh, our bus and i gotta 
fit my way up through these holes. This is one of the reasons we're using so much fuel. Um, but at the moment, we've got aluminium on the bottom line and nothing on the top, uh, the next line. I have already brought our conveyor lift all the way up. But what we want to do is, by the way, if you press spacebar, it brings up the search button and put in a container there. And we're going to run from that one to that one like so and then if we well actually yeah let's get rid of that let's put a organization no logistics a merger in right there and then hopefully we could plug that why are you so far offset now you weren't that far offset before. Uh, okay, I gotta do that again. So we're gonna run from there in that direction. Up. And that's the problem with these things. I can't see where I'm gonna hit until I'm at eye level. Providing I don't run out of rocket f uh, jetpack fuel in the meantime. That's not going to line up. But if we get it close. Okay. Uh, up. If I stand on top. Hopefully. We're going to merge on. Right there. Because the conveyor lift sometimes. Um, and I can't seem to get a rhyme or reason to this. Sometimes just magically connect. That one did. There we go. I've got a little bit of belt in there. Surely you can see that tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little bit of belt. Which is going to be a pain in the ass to upgrade later. So what we're going to do is... Get rid of that. See? Tiny bit of belt. belt. Alright, so we're going to go with a lift from there, facing that way. Bring it up to our eye level and we'll run it forward. Then I'll stand on it, get rid of our merger there, put a merger right here instead, and run it like that. And then go back to our shoes because I'm running out of fuel. Uh, fall down the hole. And we should be able to run our belt from there to there. And then, although they can get a ride up the belt, uh, up the lift, I can't. So, I spent a good portion of my last five fuel left. Working my way up through these holes to get us all the way up here. Now, you may notice that this is not going to fill that side of the bus. Now, in Factorio, I would actually just lay down all those in the opposite direction. And because this is a... Uh, I changed this over from a merger to a splitter and split it to run half this way and half that way. Because this is satisfactory and I can't do anything like that, that just means that this is the very first point our, uh, our CAD aluminium sheets will be on the bus. It does mean prior to this, all those storage containers are literally there for decorations. Um, I could... Um, at least in this case, and there's nothing really to stop me doing it, I actually face it this way and tie it in back there. There's nothing really stopping me to do that. Um, it just means I can fill up another storage container. Or I could literally just remove that belt. Um, I might end up in a situation where I can actually remove a good portion of these um, storage containers and have a very, very sta staggered start to the main bus. Um, just as we do in Factory. But that is where I'm actually going to leave it here for our first episode. Remember, there is a new episode every week. Um, also, in case you guys are curious, I have done several interviews with Jace um, in the past, so you can always search the channel for those. Or maybe I've linked them down in the description below. But yeah, this is going to be the first episode for this week. The new episodes of Satisfactory will come out every week with us getting another target or another project done. Um, 
because we've got um, Alcad aiming sheets done, I think we're going to have to do heat sinks next because we do have rubber being shipped in. We've now got the Alcad aiming sheets, which means we can easily put heat sinks on our, uh, the very next layer of our bus. Um, again, we just pull off this, bring it back down, run through some assemblers with some rubber, which will be, I don't know where rubber's going to be, um, somewhere on this bus, and we'll just move forward from there. So, Either way, I'm going to call it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.